Welcome back and welcome to the second episode of German Politics Explained. If you are interested in the German Federal Parliament, der Bundestag, and uh, its task, its structures and how it is elected, then you are at the right channel. But please, before we continue, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the bell so you won't miss the next episode. But now, let's start with the video. The Bundestag, uh, which is the federal parliament in Germany, is uh, the largest parliament in the world at the moment because of some rules they have. I will show you some sheets now w which I will comment on the way it's, wor uh, it's working, on the task it has and on the way it's elected because there are similarities for example to the UK but there are some differences in the elections and um, I hope you'll be interested. So have a look. The German Bundestag is the federal parliament. The Bundestag is the only federal constitutional body that is directly elected by the citizens. The seat of the Bundestag is now Berlin. During the Cold War it was based in Bonn. The legal number of its members today is 598. However, the number of members may differ due to the election system with overhang mandates and compensation mandates. The current 19th Bundestag, therefore, consists of uh, 709 members. First of all, legislation is the task of Parliament. The German Bundestag is uh, thus the most important legislative body. It decides, with the participation of the Federal Council, all laws that fall within the jurisdiction of the Federal Government. The deputies and parliamentary groups of the Bundestag, just like the Federal Council and the Federal Government, can introduce new or revised laws into the Bundestag as drafts. Here the debate, consultation and vote on the bill take place after a fixed procedure. Since the federal states have a substantial share of power in the federal system, the federal council, der Bundesrat, is also involved in the legislative process. He gets all the laws to vote on and can, depending on the nature of the law, even fail a draft. Later on I will publish a video especially about the federal council. As a directly elected representation of the people, the Bundestag, in addition to its function as legislator, has another very important task, the control of the federal government. In order to carry out this oversight function, MPs must be able to obtain information about the work and intentions of the government. There are a number of rights and tools at their disposal, just um, such as small and large requests or the current hour. And we also have a little bit something like uh, PMQs, but it's more um, government question than, than uh, PM questions. <laughs> the Bundestag also forms committees whose task is um, to control the government. On the one hand, these are standing committees whose primary task is to participate in legislation. But it also includes special bodies such as the Committees of Inquiry, which are used almost exclusively to control the government. When it comes to money, the Bundestag has a decisive say in the matter. This can be seen in the committed budgets, uh, budget debates, in which not only the budget of the in, uh, individual ministries, but also the fundamental political line of the government are discussed. The German Bundestag has the budget right. He sets the budget in which all federal expenditure must be disclosed. The budget determines the revenue and expenditure of the federal government each year. It is the government program in numbers, so to speak, because it provides information about what activities the country intends for the coming year and for what purpose how much money is spent. The draft budget and budget law is drawn up by the Ministry of Finance 
and discussed and decided by the federal government. After that, it has to go through the Bundestag and the Bundesrat in order to enter into force. In the Bundestag, the draft then is debated and usually revised. Since the Bundestag has the budget right according to the Constitution, the bill can only become law with a majority of Parliament. The preparation of the budget is precisely regulated in the Federal Budget Code. Another task of the Bundestag is the election of the Federal Chancellor. At the moment, the Chancellor is Angela Merkel of the Christian Democrats, as some of you might know. The proposal for a candidate comes from the Federal President. That is constitutional law. The election is made exclusively by the members without prior debate and with hidden ballots. The candidate needs the absolute majority of the votes in Parliament. After the election, the new Chancellor is appointed by the Federal President and sworn in before the Bundestag. He or she now has the opportunity to propose his or her ministers. Her ministers, my God. Also, the deselection of the Federal Chancellor is only possible by the Parliament with a so-called constructive confidence vote. To do so, it must elect a successor with a majority of its members and request the Federal President to dismiss the Chancellor and appoint the newly elected. The President must comply with this re request. In the election of the Bundestag applies the system of personalized proportional representation in which the choice of persons in the constituency, which is the first vote, is combined according to the principles of majority voting with proportional representation according to state lists of the parties. That is the second vote. So everybody has one vote each on two different columns on the ballot paper. In the first votes, who gets the most votes won the mandate. It works the same way as in the UK, for example. This way, half of the seats will be distributed. Therefore, there are 299 constituencies in Germany. The other half will be awarded according to how many percent of the votes a party has won in, a federal, in, in one federal state. The remaining uh, 299 seats are spread over the federal states according to population. Therefore, I had started my series with the division of Germany into states, so you might better understand this part of the election. The distribution of seats will only take into account parties who have received at least 5% of the votes cast or have obtained a direct mandate in at least three constituencies. As I said before, there are 709 members of parliament in the current 19th Bundestag because of that system we have um, overhang um, mandates and we also have uh, compensation mandates. That means um, if um, a party won more seats directly than they should have had according to um, the second vote, then um, the other parties get um, a compensation for that. The seat distribution in the 19th Bundestag is as follows. Um, the parties that are there in Germany, I will try to explain them a little bit better with comparing them to parties in the UK, um, so that might give a little bit understanding. The black color stands for the Christian Democrats, the CDU and CSU. Um, you can compare them to the um, Conservatives in the UK and they won 246 seats and are the biggest party in the Bundestag. The Social Democrats, the SPD, um, you can compare to Labour, have won 152 seats. The AFD, um, which are similar to UKIP, have won 91 seats. 
They are the light blue, and the Social Democrats, by the way, are, I use the, the light red. The next are the FDP in yellow. You can compare them to the Lib Dems. They won 80 seats. Then there's Die Linke, which are a socialist party descending from the ruling party of the former German Democratic Republic, here in dark red, have won 69 seats. Die Grünen, same like your uh, the Greens in the UK, and that's why I marked them green here, have won 67 seats. And they are also for independence. They have a special seating in the Bundestag, and that's uh, something I, I want to show you now. Um, in the middle of the picture you can see the seat for the speaker, and I will everything I say now will be from the view of the speaker. He's facing the Bundestag and the balconies. Um, there are the balconies for the um, visitors and for the press, Below the balconies, of course, there's much more seats um, for for the members of parliament. But I just stay focused now on the on the middle part. So the the speaker, who is the president of the Bundestag, um, has the federal government to his right. The chancellor and and the ministers um, have their seats there. On the left of the uh, speaker are the seats for the state governments. As I mentioned before, they have influence um, in the federal politics as well via the Federal Council and these seats are for the members of the Federal Council and the, the Federal Council is built by, by the state governments. Then to the uh, distribution of the seats um, from the view of the speaker. On his far left there's Die Linke, that's the Socialist Party. Then there's the um, SPD, the Social Democrats. Then there's the Grünen, the Greens. Then there's the CDU, CSU, that's the Christian Democrats. Then there's um, the FDP, the Liberals. And on the far right, from the view of the speaker, there's the AFD, um, the UKIP-like party. That was all about the Bundestag for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give this video a like if you liked it. Um, soon there will be the next episode. Just wait for it and see. I can tell you already it will be about the German government and uh, who is responsible for what, what kind of ministers do we have and so on. But for today, enough about politics. Have a nice evening and bye!